at halftime in Croke Park in the All-Ireland Hurling final replay. Kilkenny leading Galway, one goal and 11 points to two goals and four points. Liam Sheedy, Gerlach Nant, Moss McCahey here with me in the studio. Ger, uh, as far as I estimate, Galway have not scored any score point from play in that first half. Not good enough for an All-Ireland final? Yeah, but there's no reason to panic yet. No. All the speculation before this game started was who would start the best. Now, Kilkenny started the better of the mm. two. There were five points to two up in the, after 15 minutes, but more than that, they were dominating possession all over the field. The backs were totally bossing the, 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 the Galway forwards, and the Kilkenny forwards looked really, really dangerous, even though they didn't always finish off. Then we had the three-minute burst when we had the three goals yes. in the three minutes. David Box to and Richie Powell. And then by the 25th minute, you said, Kilkenny are going to run away with this. Mm. Yeah. The danger was they get another goal, there were six points up, they get another goal, the game was over. Now after that, Galway have gradually come back into the game. Kilkenny have missed easy chances of points. Kilkenny haven't scored a point, uh, have only scored one point since the 25th minute. So in the last 11 minutes they haven't scored. Galway have, have kind of got their way back yeah. into the game, even though they don't deserve to be back into the game. And now they're only four points down at halftime without having hurled, mm. without having scored a point from play. So really, you know, they're still not in a bad position. They're lucky the game isn't over, you know, sure. so the game is still there for the taking if they come out with a really more positive, positive, more confident approach now in the second half. Even if they haven't uh, gone particularly well, Kilkenny have played well in that first half, Galway's still got a couple of breaks, the two goals for example, David Burke's first one really roused the crowd here. Ah, they were, they were huge scores because it was a time where they were, they were really struggling for anything of, of no to happen and you know, as I said, they look to be really under pressure but again, you know, it just shows the, 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 the long ball mentality, you know, when it's in around the square, you know, that anything can happen. In fairness to Damien Hayes, I think he's done an awful lot of borrowing there and, you know, picked up by Earl Tanyan and it's, you know, let's be honest, it's a little bit of a miss hit but that's a fierce dangerous ball and in fairness to David Burke, he gets a great flick and it gets inside uh, Jackie Turley and gets a great flick and I think the disappointing thing from Galway point of view was that TJ Reid had the ball back over the, the, the bear before they even knew it, you know, but that, that was a huge score for them and, you know, you know, you would have expected them to kick on, but you know, between the 17 to 27 minute, Kilkenny outscored uh, Galway 1 5 to no score within that period, and that's really where they've done the serious damage in that well, first Well, Tomas, if that uh, goal was a boost to Galway, they got another absolute boost when or got another one. Yeah, this, this was a cracking goal, but after the first goal, the reaction from Kilkenny was incredible because they went up the field and TJ Reid got a score. And, and I mean, this is probably, look, some people might say it could have been a free in there, you know, and I mean, once or twice. But when they win possession, they get out the field. Joe is the man that gets it, right? Again, not a position I like to see him back in defence, but it's a great catch inside, and it's great into passing. And David Burke, that's a fantastic finish. And you would say, yes, that is going to drive Galway on, right? They've, they've not been in the game, they haven't had a whole lot of possession, but they've breached that Kilkenny defence again by scoring goals. And I mean, I mean Joe is right, this, this game, I mean, Gal we've seen Galway. Yeah. In all their matches, yeah. taking it from the start, going seven, eight points ahead. They now find themselves in a different position for the first time. It's not a bad position to be in, four points down at halftime. And it's Kilkenny have done all the hurling. The hooking, the blocking, you see Shefflin out there as centre forward. The running they do. But you've got to maintain that for 70 minutes. Uh, Galway band, the stunning, are playing in Crow Park here at the moment. Playing yes, brewing, up, power. Brewing, up a, <laughs> brewing up a storm. Yeah. Uh, Galway were brewing up a storm at that stage, they but were. then the wind changed. Like, can he yes. get back at them with that goal? They were, they were, that goal put them three points up, mm. right? And, but just a minute later, this happened. You know, the usual thing with Kilkenny, you know, when you least expect it, or when, they, when, they, when Kilkenny most lead, lead, I should say. Now, here's the man that's playing well today, his own lock, and the first 25 minutes anyway. Now, James Cahill blocks it out, he's slow to come out of it, and Richie Power is right there and he just taps it into the net. That's yeah. always but the danger with Kilkenny. You know, there's, it, it you know, the, the slightest man, a man left loose, Richie left loose there in the corner. The only man who's near him is Yale Tang, and who's there mid midfielder. So all the backs sucked in to, ta to, to, to take on. Uh, to take on Larkin coming in, the ball breaks out, but, I, I, but I, definitely I, yeah. uh, the goalie is not at his I best I think it there. clearly yeah. illustrates yeah. about yeah. the goalie situation. I mean, best. just two yeah. or three balls have gone in there, Michael. Ah, yeah. he's, he's, he's very good on the puck outside of it, he's yeah. delivering good ball, but when it's coming, he's failed to catch. That was a ball that actually could have taken mm. his hand. Mm. Two or three yeah. balls that spilled out, he actually failed to go and pick them. He kicked one, I think, out over the end line mm. on one side. It is a difficult for position for their management to be in at this stage. Do they bring this man back out again for the second half period? Because it, it, yeah. another spill like that will result in the ball in the back of the net. Big, big call. Yeah, uh, we were watching him just going off actually, Liam, at half time, <clears throat> and uh, he didn't look entirely comfortable with himself, as Tomal said yeah. there. 
he was very tentative just kind of looking at him in that first half yeah look at it here yeah I mean it's very clear he's playing he's playing through the pain barrier you know there's no doubt about it I mean the, the guy isn't 100 mm. percent like that's that's been honest about it but the other side of it is I think he's either, that, either that or he's saying you must be joking I'm not coming off yeah well I'd say that's probably what he is saying I mean you know I, I think his puck outs have mm. been reasonably good I, I yeah. think you know mm. he's been mm. getting that whatever distance he's comfortable hitting the ball 800 but it's just when it comes in around the square there's a little well, bit of uneasiness but I mean there's obviously it, it, there's, there's it, a lack it, of trust it, it, there's a lack of trust in the reserve goalkeeper I mean it, I think exactly guy, you're right you're, there's they're, a lack of trust there that they haven't brought in because the sub goalkeeper in a play on that I mean a man there actually it's Colm Canlon who is talking to him Colm Canlon is not even on the panel he's just brought in for the day as a sub to the sub goal so it seems to me that they will not bring on Fergal Fannery but they'll bring on Colm Canlon who hasn't played with him all year seems absolutely well the changes the goal we have made to Moss in that first half haven't been James Gale they've been out the field and there's a couple of examples of Galway spilling possession having possession of the ball giving it away and Kilkenny getting points out of it yeah that's that's very evident in the first half Michael as well when they had clean possession we just took two for example here yeah, Larkin look, and um, but again though Michael look you, you can say that's a bad play by, by, by the centre back or Latanya but it's great play by Richie Hogan to get out there to get the hook in and that's what Brian Cody would be emphasising with their forwards all for the last three weeks the work rate wasn't good enough again the ball here to Damien Hayes I think it goes backwards here with a hand pass it's intercepted by Richie Power I think or yeah, Richie Power now will come on to it again but I mean it's just the work rate here look mm. and this is mm. a great touch by Richie mm. Power and a great score mm. and this is giving Kilkenny a new lease of life yeah, I yeah. mean it's something that they missed John mentioned about it before the game that there will be more physical intensity from coming from Kilkenny and that's very very evident we're headed for a short break here on the programme back with more on today's All-Ireland Hurling Final right after these now don't go away because we'll also be giving you the opportunity to enter our special competition you could be heading off to one of the world's sunniest spots and one of the world's most amazing cities Now, earlier in the programme, we got the thoughts of Cyril Farrell and Eddie Brennan, who are down pitch side. So let's uh, go and join them again. They're with Dara Maloney. Michael, welcome back. Cyril, what did you think of the first half? Well, Dara Kilkenny have done all the hurling. They've got 12 scores to go with six, but they're still only four pints up. They'll be wondering how they're not more. Galway really need, need to kind of cut loose. They're playing very tentative, but you'd have to say over the over the first 35 minutes that Kilkenny are kind of bossing, bossing the game, and it's important that Galway come out and kind of take the game to them. So far, Kilkenny are kind of dictating the pattern of the game. Eddie, what have you made of Kilkenny's first half? Yeah, they've come out of the blocks a lot faster. Um, the few fellas I suppose I spoke about before the match are, are really doing the business. And for me, Richie Hogan is the key man there at the moment. And it's his work rate more than anything else. He has caught a couple of great balls. He has dispossessed two Galway defenders for scores. But they seem to just have a bit more... Uh, their body language is a lot better today. And they're not waiting around for someone to do it. They're all going at it. And there's a lot more space in the Galway back unit, which Kilkenny haven't done in the two occasions they've met him already. Lads, can Kenny back out? We've got to go back upstairs to Michael. Thanks. We'll talk to you at the end of the match, lads. Thank okay. you. Yeah, just to remind you, it is Kilkenny 111, Galway 2-4 subs on the Galway team and the sub goalie is on as well. For more information on that, let's go back to Ger Canning and Michael Dignan. 